Welcome to my channel, Croft House, where I will show you how I run my business of soft furnishing and reupholstery in small space living. All you need is a dining table. I put a plastic cover on it if I don't want it to get scratched. And I also use a fairly long, wide coffee table that I can use either sitting on a low seat or kneeling. The reason for that is it's really important that you keep your back straight. You don't want to get any aches and pains leaning over. And although this high table is great for the upholstery, I find if I'm sewing, it puts some strain on my back. So I actually find the coffee table better for that. Um, so today I'm going to recover this ottoman which this is actually a loose cover it's velcroed on here nine times out of ten they're stapled on or tacked um, but this one we're going to do it in one piece so we cut the top we put a row of piping and then we fix the bottom and I'm happy that it's fitting where it should we can put on a row of velcro Let's take a look at the bottom, what I've found. The first thing I've done is removed the legs and I've numbered them all. I'm sure they would all go back anywhere but I just prefer to do it like that. Uh, main reason being it removes some weight from the stool and I can then use the table without having to put a cover on it. Uh, you can see the, cor the velcro has not come to the edges. Now, I tried to get this off in one piece, I couldn't. So I snipped the corner here. I then pulled back all the other corners and in doing so, this one ripped even more. So when I make the new cover, I will um, leave two corners open on the opposite corners on the diagonal and I will machine stitch two together. The cover's now completely off and one thing I should have said to you before was take note of the corners because you can make a pattern from this but you will need probably to unpick it. Um, you can just take it from the measurements actually if you take the width and the length um, and you don't really need to take it all apart but if you feel comfortable with that just take some photos so you know how it should go back together again. So to get your corners if you don't want to take it apart or even if you do want to take it apart you can look at the inside and the outside to see how, how the folds have been set. But one interesting thing here is that um, on the label it says it's uh, professionally dry clean. This product must be professionally dry clean, tailor-made removable covers. Well, I'm pretty sure this hasn't come off and been cleaned because it's still got a substantial amount of fire retardant backing on it which cleaning can remove unless you send it to somewhere where they are going to make absolutely sure that it is it comes back to you fire retardant and that's really important um, in which case if this was a loose cover removed by a customer and put back you wouldn't be snipping the edges but I think you'd find it really difficult to to get it off I've just unpicked one corner to show you um, so that you don't need to unpick everything which is pretty time consuming um, if you, as long as you measure your rectangle and you can see the edges are straight coming up to the corner on both sides. So when we come to the corner you can see they've actually cut the corner off. I don't know if you can tell from here. Um, so you can take your pattern and cut that corner or you can just lay it on and see how it fits and do it that way. Um, and I'll show you that as we go along. Now you can cut your pieces of fabric out, you can lay your piping on, you can lay your bottom strip on and you can machine all together. But if you're a little bit nervous of it, this is another way to do it. What I've done here is find the center of the ottoman, marked it with a pin, 
folded my fabric to find the center place them together and then all you've got to do is jiggle it a little bit to get your pattern level when you cut your fabric check that the pattern or the weave is level quite often it isn't but you need it to sit level on the ottoman because you've got fairly defined lines here cut along the pattern at the bottom on the long edge and then use a set square to level off your edges you may need to jiggle it a little bit but just take a look at it and see what's level because if you've got a pattern or a weave that's way out it's going to be noticeable what i've done so far now that i've measured made sure everything is the same um, height all the way around is put a line of pins along the middle just to hold it I've then um, taken some pins and to hold the side in place I've gone down and up and I've then set the corners so I've put a I've put a pin in the centre, pulled it down, put I can show you. So I've just pulled down, put a pin where I've found the centre so I know where to take my pleats to and then pull the pleats over making sure this is tight along here too Oops. Hit the wood. and we do the other one the same so we meet in the middle and we uh, just keep an eye on this so everything is level but it, it's temporary because what I want to do now bearing in mind that this is a loose cover and with wear it's going to stretch a bit is smooth everything just as you would with traditional upholstery smooth over to pull it a little bit tighter and if you can see we get a little bit of a wrinkle so we just pull that out and put the pin in again and we do that all the way around and on the corners as well okay let's take a quick look at where i am so far i've made some piping and i will show you how to do that now I've machined it and I've zigzagged the edges to overlock them because this is quite a fraying fabric and I've allowed a centimetre and a half for turning and to bind it so it doesn't fray. The next job is to set it if you're going to do this way rather than trust yourself just to machine it straight on is to make sure it's level and this is a very handy little tool to uh, measure the depths all the way around um, and there you have it and I've just pinned it on and I will now pin it to the fabric and I can just take it off cut along where the piping is the 
cut along the, the end of the piping so it's even and then I can zigzag that all together before attaching the bottom. I've just left the cores like this because I can then cut them and join them invisibly. Once you're happy the top cover is level and I have to make sure here that it's going to cover the bit on the bottom because this is wood and this is foam and this is wood so I have to make sure that this is going to pull over it so it's making it, it looks a little bit loose perhaps at the moment but it won't be when all the corners are pulled in tight so you cut your edges and I've cut and cut four pieces front back and two sides make sure you mark your pattern pieces as well so you've got the top marked on each piece what I've done now is zigzag the top seam that will be exposed if you're going to make this into a loose cover and the side edges. Now you can just measure your pieces, machine them, machine it on. If you're not sure or you want to be really precise you can leave your lengths a little bit longer, start from the middle and work out to the edges, pin out to the edges and, and then when you come to the corner you can find your center point where the two edges match pin them and then you can stitch them at that point. What I've done is I've fully machined two of the corners right down and I've left the other two so that I've just machined a little way down because it may be that they're too tight and I would rather do it this way than have to unpick and do it again. So what I will do is fit it on, check it and then I can soon whip it off and, and um, finish the machining. If you're, if you're upholstering this, if you're never going to take it off, you don't need to worry too much about the zigzagging or the overlocking however this is quite a, a however this is a fabric that frays quite a bit and it does help to keep everything in place while you're pushing and pulling everything about so that it it doesn't all rip up but as long as you've got um, enough of a turn you should be fairly safe the other thing I want to do is just show you because I think you saw earlier my um, commercial thread is is on a cone which obviously isn't going to fit on this sewing machine now I always used um, industrial sewing machines in the past but this is now small space living and working and I don't have room for an industrial sewing machine but this has actually worked really well I've just literally sort of wedged I wedge the comb with my scissors and take the thread across just as you would normally and it's really working very well. This is my faff workhouse. It's the second one of these machines I've had and I find them really really good on heavy duty work. Once you've got the cover fitted over smooth it down from the side to side and back to front I've pulled the corners down, make sure the seams face downwards because that gives you an extra bit of um, protection on that ridge of wood. Line the corners up with the corners on the wood and you can go around and you can see here that I've just left this one open, all the other three I've machined fully but this just gives me a little bit more to play with and as an upholsterer this, is, this makes more sense to me. So the next job is to turn it over, make sure the piping runs level all the way round and prepare it to fix the Velcro. What I've done is taken a measurement all the way round to make sure the piping is level. I have then pulled it, when it's level I've pulled this quite tightly and I've pinned it in place here to hold it. I've then folded the top under 
as you can see the the loose edge here where it where I'm happy it will sit just above the velcro so to about here I've left the loose corner still loose and I'm quite happy to stitch that up myself afterwards and what I've done is actually put a pin here and I will put um, my fire retardancy label in this corner I can then tell my customer that this is the point that will be the easiest to undo if they wanted to take it off for any reason uh, so then you can see how I've just pinned on the velcro and I can now stitch it. You can see this is, is too long. What I'm going to do is stitch the top row and I will then trim it all the way around the midline of the velcro so it's hidden and everything is neatly stitched under the velcro and I will now do that by machine. I just want to show you as I'm going along. So I've stitched the top of the velcro and then I've just opened it up and I've cut the seam remember we had the uh, the overlay and I've just cut it now so it's going to sit nicely inside the velcro and I can just stitch along the bottom and that leaves me a nice neat edge one other thing I should say is that I'm only using ordinary cotton thread on this not the heavy duty commercial thread I just want to show you how I'm finishing the corners uh, that will sit on the bottom. So I've decided that I will m make them loosely and so I can join them together. And it will be easier um, if the customer wants to take the cover off because it's so tight otherwise it's almost impossible. So on the other side... This one I've finished, you can see I've velcroed all the way up. Now to make that corner neat, because we, we need to eliminate bulk, what I've done here is taken the edge, right folded it up along and on this seam I've just taken it over, folded in, so that I've got a sort, sort of triangle shape here and that will then sit very tidily under the velcro and I can just stitch that down on there. The alternative to leaving the corners open like this is to do them as they did on the original and you can just sew the seam straight up to the top and what happens if they've gone to the point where we cross over onto the bottom of the chair and they've brought it in and you can do this too however I couldn't get this off so that's the reason why I've left these corners like this because I think it will make it much easier for my customer to remove if they feel they need to do so. When you fit the cover make sure you can take your hand inside and feel for the seam and make sure the seam is facing downwards and because in this case I've got a piece of wood at the bottom and I don't want that to pull and wear on the, the cloth I'm going to make sure this seam inside here is sitting right on the edge of the wood which is where I lined the uh, piping up to be you can then pull down and get your bottom underneath the ottoman is now finished and I just want to show you how I've finished the the back of it. So it's all velcroed on here, all fits very nicely. I've The reason I've put the um, fire retardancy label in this position is because I've stitched from where you can see the pin is by hand. I've stitched it with some fine white twine so that just in case the the customer would like to take it off they can see the white twine they can snip it down to this point I, it's a bright palaver and to be honest if it was mine I don't think I'd want to take it off this fabric is aqua clean which actually sponges up really well um, but there's the uh, possibility of doing that if you want to and I've put the legs on now but in all the other corners at this point 
I've literally just folded them over and stitched this bit with a couple of stitches running stitches together just to hold them in place but as you can see the legs actually are sitting over very nicely they're very firm so if you if you didn't want to stitch and you're loose here and I've literally just put a couple of stitches at the top you can just fold that over and the leg screws down very firmly on it and will hold it in place the fire retardancy label, um, again, we have the batch number and um, my postcode. And I've just written uh, loose cover, recover, loose cover on it. Um, I've taken out the original one. It, it says it has a, uh, it says it does not include a Schedule 3 interliner. Actually, it does, but it's the original. So I've just marked that. I've not replaced any foams or composites, so I've just written original, ticked that. The cover I have replaced, so I've just stated loose cover only. Now you could t fix this um, label, you could um, actually just stitch it inside to this cover along with the Velcro, but I've just marked it here because I want the customer to know which corner they can unpick if they want to take it off. So now we have one finished ottoman ready to go back to the customer. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to see more reupholstery or soft furnishing in a small space videos, please subscribe, like and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching.